Welcome back to the Haggard Ranch, everyone, and welcome back to the opening kickoff, I guess you would say, get together for the Gridiron Club of Dallas. And right about now, we're going to visit a little bit with the MC of tonight's event, somebody whose face is going to be highly recognizable in the Dallas Fort Worth area, Scott Murray. And of course, Scott, the first question I have for you has absolutely nothing to do with MCing or being a sportscaster for here a number of years, but I heard. And you can tell me if this is rumor or fact that you're working on a project to try to get a movie made out of that Plano East um, Tyler John Tyler game that might have been the wildest football game ever played. If you do, I think you ought to get Rob Lowe as Eddie Clinton. But why don't you tell us a little bit about that? <laughs> you know, it's, it's a funny thing. I uh, First of all, hello. How are you doing? It's good to see you, Kevin and John. Um, when I left uh, NBC5 after almost 25 years there as a sports anchor, I left. One of the main reasons I left is I wanted to write a book, wanted to do a lot more speaking, uh, a little more charity work, and wanted to go into business with my son. He had gone to Baylor grad school at TCU, and television film was his, was his major. So he had started a production company. He was doing pretty well very quickly. So I said, you know what? This would be a dream of a lifetime for you and I to work together. Can you put up with your dad? He said, oh, yeah, dad. Because I used to take him to spring training and Cowboys training camp and what have you. And, and so we started Murray Media. And he uh, took his company, and I took a little company that I was just beginning to do, and we put them together. And so that was uh, seven, eight years ago, and uh, the rest is history. So uh, he has uh, been working on, he has the rights to the Doak Walker story. is a full-length movie. He's been working on that. It just completed a script and what have you. And some people knew about that, came to us and said, would you do something with that, that great game that, uh, that Plano had back in 94 uh, and I said oh gosh I remember that one saw those guys that did the play-by-play -play in the Tonight Show and, and then they came on Channel 5 and I had them on Sports Extra and I said that was the most incredible game I think I ever saw I remember like it was yesterday and uh, and trust me uh, between Hanson and I I'm sure we've seen probably more football games at the high school level than than just about any two guys and and because we nobody was covering high school football when the two of us came back here in you know 80 81 and, uh, and we both loved high school football. So we, we started doing, and we'd be out at a different game every Friday night. Now, you know, you see everybody doing that. But it was a lot of fun, but by far, I think that was the neatest game I, I, I was ever, ever uh, can, re can recall being a part of in any way, shape, or form. You know, of course, the judge did some incredible research on that today, and I'm going to have him ask a few questions about different players. But first off, um, what, what, what is really going to be the – here's what, what is the – what is going to be kind of the theme that's going to carry a whole movie about that particular game? I mean, uh, you know, like, for example, is it going to be what has happened to the guys since or leading up to the game, the game itself? How, where are you going to put your focus? You know, I, I don't know. And, and the reason I don't know is because we really haven't gotten to that point. I just met one of the people that, that brought us the idea and said, what would you think about this? Would you be interested in doing this? Just met with him at my office this afternoon. And so as far as what the, the script would be or what we might do, nobody's even thought about that. I, I would like, just personally, it's got to have a little uh, cachet. It's got to have a little uh, charisma. You've got to have a little, you got to have a hook that people are going to get excited about. You just can't relive it or it's more of a documentary. So it's got to be, it's, 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 it's almost like a blindside or something or a Rudy. You, you, you take a, 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 a true story something that happened and now you make it and I don't want to say make it Hollywoody but you, you put some things in there you kind of embellish some things without getting too far off the mark and just make it fun to watch so that the non-football fans somebody like my wife who, who doesn't know the five yard line from a left tackle can say oh this was it she loved blindside and and I'm on the USA Film Festival board and and uh, uh, John Lee Hancock who was the one that is responsible for that and was a producer and what have you. He had lost that to, I'm, I hope I'm not telling anything out of school here, but he had lost that to Fox five or six years. He sold it to them. I think it was Fox, 20th Century Fox, and then he couldn't get it back, said, I want to do this, and, it, and that's what happens. So I would, I'd want to keep it right here. I'd want all the people that, that have a certain sense of ownership in this area that were a part of it, whether it's from Tyler or whether they're from Planer or wherever they might be here in North Texas, and, and, and get as many people involved as we can. You know, Coach Brents and, and you know, I, I been involved with the you know the National Football F Foundation and the uh, Gridiron Club with with coach for I don't know three four years whatever it's been, and uh, so I called him and I said, have you talked to Gerald about this? When I talked to these people, and they said, oh yeah, we we kind of mentioned. I said, well he's a guy you got to talk to the people that were there and see what they'd like to do and feel. But it's got to be the it's got to be the story. It's got to be a Rudy type story. It's got to be a a, a blindside type story. 
Well, that's what I would envision. Maybe we can get Sandra Bullock down here to Dallas. Judge, you, you, you watched that game today, so why don't you ask Scott a little bit about some of the key people and some of the things about it, because you know a little bit about it now. Well, Scott, and I, I was at that game in 94 because I graduated from Plano East in 1990 and played football there. And so it was amazing. to And I stayed the whole time to watch it unfold. And so my first question, kind of light, where did you find yourself that evening? Were you watching the game or were you off doing something else that night? No, no, I was, I was back at the station. And uh, um, we had a crew out there. Um, I'm thinking uh, one of our guys, I think it might have been Bill Jones was out at the game. I'm trying to think who it was that particular time, but I think Bill was at the game, and we got a call back that, you won't believe what's going on out here. And we had to be selective as to where we were going to send our satellite truck, our live truck, so we could get these things covered. And, and you'd kind of, you know, roll the dice. Well, here's a good game. Look at this one. Well, in, in Plano, especially back in the 90s, I mean, they were, you know, the 80s with, with Tom Kimbrough and that, and then in the 90s with, with uh, Coach Brands. I mean, it was just... I mean, Plano was a some some place you went to, to cover good football, and and there weren't as many high schools as there are now either. So I mean, it was uh, it was kind of a no-brainer where you were going to go on a Friday night, and you could be pretty selective and know that you had eight or ten teams in the entire North Texas area, depending on whether it was 5A, 4A, or whatever that you knew you had to be at. And in Plano was usually one of them. So so we had a crew there that day. So uh, so that's where we. So it was it was fun. It was fun. Did you ever get to review the film on it? I mean, did you go over the film or see the last two minutes of the game? I've seen the, yeah, the, the last two or three minutes all the, when all that took place. Oh, I've seen that several times. Uh, yeah, and it's, it's crazy. It's, uh, and, and, yeah, it's just it's crazy. I mean, that just doesn't happen. As a sportscaster for 25 years with NBC, have you ever seen anything like that either at the high school, collegiate, or pro level? Not at, not at uh, well, that, you know, that's a good question. Um, I remember being at the Cotton Bowl when Joe Montana, I think this was the 79 Cotton Bowl, because I was working with NBC out of Washington, D.C. It's the, the year before I came here. And, and, uh, and Namath had the flu or had, was sick, and they took him in. They gave him some hot soup or something at halftime. But he was over at the Cotton Bowl, and, and Notre Dame was, was, uh, was there, and, I, and they were up against Houston, and Houston had, were up, I don't know, 21 points or something. And he brought them back, and they won that game. I think it was 35-34 was the final. And that was one of the most incredible college games I ever saw. And, of course, we all know the, the, the legacy that Montana had in the NFL after that. But, um, no, I, I, can't, I can't think of another high school game like that. Uh, not that that had, had that much going on in such a, an abbreviated period of time, right at the end of the game when it was all on the line. And, uh, and, and again, where it was, it wasn't like it was the first game of the season or something like that. Uh, no, I'd, I'd say that was that was probably it. <laughs> Let me change gears on you just a, for a little bit. You were here tonight with the National Football Foundation. Right. We had Coach Brents on first, and he talked about the development of coaching, the development of the sport, trying to maintain an ethic of the sport, creating good coaches that follow a good system to help young athletes grow up. You've supported the foundation the last three to four years. Tell us why it is you support the foundation and what you think young coaches and young high school athletes can get out of the foundation? Well, I'm going to sound like an old man when I say this. First of all, I know Steve Hatchell, who's the, the CEO of the foundation. I've known Steve for, gosh, even when he was back here in, in Dallas with the, the Southwest Conference as a commissioner at that time. But I, I, I guess, um, and Matt Sign, who's his assistant, and, uh, but I, have all, I was somebody that grew up to be a pediatrician. And literally a couple of weeks before I went off to medical school was given an opportunity to get into broadcasting full time. I'd been doing it part time when I was in college. It was a lark. It was something that was fun to do, but it was an avocation. It wasn't a vocation. And, and I was one of these kids that memorized the back of every baseball card or football card he, that he had since he was seven years old. But when I was given this opportunity, um, I took them, you know, made the most of it because I really enjoyed sports. And I was fascinated with the, the television and communications business. But the thing that bothered me most after I got into it was to see so many, I call them Vince Lombardi wannabes, okay? And, and this is a different time and a different place now than it was when Vince. Uh, people ask me about people that I've interviewed over the years. I remember Vince Lombardi. That was, that was something. Uh, and, and yet... I'm more into the coaches that are concerned about a kid's 
livelihood instead of his tenure as a, as a football player. I think he can learn so much about life through football. I'm big because there's so much about life or football that's just like life. But I get tired of, of uh, some of the coaches that it's win at any expense. And I'm probably going to tick a lot of people off out there. But I, I, think, I think as a football coach, you have a responsibility to teach somebody to do it. My dad used to say, the, the, the title of my first book is Whatever It Takes. And, and my dad used to say, you do whatever it takes to get it right, but by doing it right. And sometimes I don't think that exists. And that bothers me. And it's not just at the high school level, in college level, and in the pros. If you can get away with it, you don't get caught, then you're home free. And, and I don't. So I'm really a big proponent and a big fan of, of a lot of the football coaches that I see out there now that are more concerned about just the, the W's, are more concerned about the opportunity and the obligation that they have to work with some of these young people and to turn them into to great young men and take the opportunity they had to be a part of sports, which I think is one of the most important things there are building blocks that we all can be a part of and and but use it right you did not I, I, that is absolutely what i was looking for an answer i mean you know we have a lot of young coaches out there that are coming up and as you've said you can make quite an impression on a young person my life's trend took its form from sixth seventh eighth grade football and then going into high school football it helped me identify a coach who did care versus a coach who didn't care and so you hit it right on the head. I'll tell you, Coach Landry, Tom Landry, uh, when I came here in, in 80, 81, uh, I was working with NBC in Washington, D.C. So I was doing half network and half local. And when I was doing local, I was covering the Redskins. And Sonny Jurgensen was there, Joe Theismann was there. I used to do the Joe Theismann show with Joe every Monday up in, up in, uh, uh, in uh, Falls Church, Virginia. And that was, that was fun and everything. But when I got down here, Here's this guy that you always saw with the arms folded and the little fedora. And I thought, how about that? Tom Landry. And I met him at the Super Bowl 12 in New Orleans when the Cowboys beat the, the, uh, the Broncos and in the locker room. And I just was really impressed. But my dad always liked him for the reasons I just told you. You talk to anybody that was – I was with Drew Pearson doing a, a function two nights ago. And Russell Maryland, who's going to be here tonight, was with us. And Russell said, I'd love to have played for Coach Landry. I never got a chance to and, – and, and Drew said – I learned more about life from Coach Landry than I ever learned about football. And you just knew. We got on the plane. Every, if you didn't have your tie, tie the right way. And he would do things like this. He'd say, after a meeting, say, don't forget, guys, you've got to be at the plane 9 in the morning, whatever it is, wherever the trip was that, that week. He'd say, is there anybody in here that's not sure how to tie a tie? Let me know. We've got a couple of fellows over here that will help you. He wanted us to make sure that we, had, we looked good, that we represented the Dallas Cowboys in the city of Dallas, Texas, in the best way possible, and and he said that was it. That was it. He was just that's the kind of that's we miss that kind of coach. We miss that kind of coach. Absolutely, Scott. Thank you, Kevin. Okay. Well, well, we'll do. We'll no, just no, 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 no. Well, Scott, we just might, might say well, we'll conclude this by saying, you know, this is an exciting project to me because you're saying I never saw anything like that. Well, let me tell you, I've been to two dozen rodeos, a dozen state fairs a half dozen tractor pulls and I've never seen anything like that so you got a good subject matter best of luck <laughs> thank you very much I'm sure we'll be calling you okay, okay. Kevin thank you so good much. to see you Scott okay that was Scott Murray and I'll tell you what we're uh, we'll be uh, back with more